Good day everyone, we are the group 4 and we will be discussing about the literature under the Republic 1946 to 1985. So before we discuss about the table artwork and authors, let's have flashback first. Because of the conquest of Japan to the Philippines, it destroyed the economy of our country and it seemed that massive foreign aid could rebuild it. The life of Filipino before, it's only balancing because of the hunger, terror, and security. Most of Filipino resorted to collaborating with the Japanese for reasons such as politics, survival, and opportunity. After the Pacific War ended, collaboration was given amnesty by President Manuel Rojas. The amnesty was a result is in turn put the Filipino ruling in its credibility at stake because of the ambiguities and irregularities that were not resolved. The U.S. colonialists also give issue in cooperation, not as political will but as a means of survival. If a rigid trial was done to the detractors, many of Filipino ruling elite would boost their credibility and this was not favorable to U.S. colonization because of the time the elites were the intermediary between the American colonizer and the Filipinos. The elites had a lot of influence on the masses and the U.S. wanted to tap their services and use them as a lever. Hi guys, this is Lady Salcedo and you will do this as continuation of report ni Ms. Masurka. So, to secure the new republic alliance with the United States after its independence was granted, a series of agreements were signed, like the Bell Trade Act, also known as the Philippine Trade Act of 1946 was an act passed by the United States Congress specifying policy governing trade between the Philippines and the United States. But before this act was ratified by the Philippine Congress, the United States offered $800 million for a post-World War II rebuilding fund. So the terms under this act are preferential tariffs on U.S. products imported into the Philippines a fixed exchange rate between peso and dollars, no restriction on currency transfer from the Philippines to the United States, parity rights granting U.S. citizens and corporation rights to the Philippine natural resources equal to those of Philippine citizens. Contrary to Article 13 in the 1935 Philippine Constitution, necessitating a constitutional amendment and together with the Philippine Rehabilitation Act they allowed the US to use the Philippines for their military and the next is the educational exchange program or Fulbright program this was the key to the Philippine assimilation of the US culture actually this was a program in a two-way exchange of culture but didn't happen. This was the time when Filipino artists, writers, and musicians were given a chance to go to the U.S. to learn about the country. They were also given a lecturing privilege. The impact of this program can be seen in the terms of artwork and literature that the next reporter will discuss. I am Jerisa Castro from Cibet 22501P and I am about to report the number 3 and the number 4 which is some notable words and the Filipino writer Francisco Lazaro. So the third one is Maganda pa ang daigdig novel. Tagalog language novel siya na sinulat ng isang Filipino novelist na si Lazaro Francisco. Una siyang nag-appear noong 1955 sa pages ng Liwayway Magazine. Itong Liwayway Magazine na to, ito yung popular or yung leading Tagalog weekly magazine way back 1922. Yung Liwayway Magazine, nagpa-publish din siya ng mga Tagalog short stories, poetry, comics, essays, and etc. It was first published in book form by the Ateneo de Manila University Press in 1982. In 1992, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, 
or the UNESCO chose this novel as less known literary work authored by a Filipino writer that has high artistic merit and worthy of translation to introduce to an international readership. Walking Home, Natula naman na isunulat ni Emmanuel S. Torres. So usually, pag describe natin yung home, ito yung personal space, warmth, love, or and etc. Pero sa tula ni Emmanuel S. Torres, in-emphasize niya yung home as reason or cell. Kasi habang papalapit daw ng papalapit or pauwi ng bahay, yung subject dito is na- mas, nara- mas nararamdaman niya, nagiging lonely siya. Then, ito yung sort of review ng walking home. The next one, itong mga Bartolina, Walking Home in Cipolo, ako ang daigdig, isa to sa mga example ng mga notable works. The next one is the Summer Solstice, short story na isunulat naman ni Nick Joaquin. Also known as Tatarin or Tadarin. The story narrates a ritual performed by women to invoke the gods to grant the blessing of fertility by dancing around a balete tree that was already a century old. So, itong summer solstice, short story siya, tapos cultural event din siya, na nangyayari tuwing festival ng St. John. So, itong summer solstice, ito daw yung pinaka-longest day of the year and the first day of summer. Tapos, yung summer solstice, since sinaselebrate siya or ritual of fertility siya, so umiikot lang siya sa pro-woman story. Hey, I am Rika May Pikinito from Sibet 22501P and I'm going to report about the literature under the Republic of the Philippines. One of the notable author of the Philippines is Amado Vera Hernandez. He was born on September 13, 1903 and died on March 24, 1970. He was a Filipino writer and the labor leader who was known for his criticism of social injustices in the Philippines and was later imprisoned for his involvement in the communist movement. He was the central figure in a landmark legal case that took 13 years to settle. He was born in Hagone, Bulacan, but grew up in Tondo, Manila, where he studied at the Manila High School and at the American Correspondence School. While still a teenager, he began writing in Tagalog for the newspaper Watawat. He would later write a column for the Tagalog publication Pagkakaisa, and became editor of Mabuhay. Some of his works are novels, poems, plays, and essays. His socio-political novels were based on his experiences as a guerrilla, as a labor leader, and as a political detainee. His works are Mga Ibong Mandaragit from 1969, and Luha ng Buwaya from 1972. His poems are Isang Dipang Langit, Panata sa Kalayaan, Ang Dalaw, Bartolina, Kung Tuyon Ang Luha Mo Aking Bayan, and Honorable Absente. His plays are mostly based on his experiences in prison, and they are The Munting Lupa from 1957, Hagdan sa Bahaghari from 1958, Ang Mga Kagalang-Galang from 1959, and Magkabilang Muka ng Isang Bagol from 1960. And of course, his essays. Si Atang at Ang Dulaan, Jose Corazon de Jesus at Ang Ating Panuloan. Again, Amado Vera Hernandez. Good day everyone! I'm Janaline G. Salbado from Cibet 22501P and I'm going to talk all about Emmanuel Torres, another one notable author in literature under the Republic. Emmanuel Torres is a poet, art critic, professor of English and comparative literature at the Atenea de Manila University and curator of its art museum. He was born on April 29, 1932 in Manila. 
At his age of 22, in the year of 1954, he finished his BA in Education at the Ateneo de Manila University. And in 1957, on a Fulbright Smith Mann Fellowship, he obtained his MA in English at the State University of Iowa, where he enjoyed an international scholarship in creative writing and attended Paul Engels' Writers' Workshop. After he finished his study, he pursued his career as he joined the Ateneo faculty in 1958, and since 1960, was curator at the Ateneo University Art Gallery. At the Ateneo, he held the Henry Lee Irving Chair in Creative Writing and the FEBTC Jose B. Fernandez Chair for Art Research. In addition to the extensive local and international recognition he received for his work in the arts and letters, Torres was an art columnist in the Manila Times. He has also been a member of several committees on art exhibits across the globe. Some of Torres' works on art are Jeepney from 1979 which talks about the history of Jeepney and many uses of it over the years with colorful photographs of the many incarnations it has had. The next one is Kaya Manan 77 paintings from the Central Bank Collection from 1981. This book was an award winner in 1982. It is about the painting collection of the Central Bank of the Philippines which is truly a treasure of the national cultural heritage. The last two books is The Ships of Silence from 1972 and The Smile on Smoky Mountain and Other Poems from 1991. These two books show the socio-political realities and social concern in the late 1960s and 1970s. Because of Emmanuel Excellency, he received the Joseph Murray Award for Literary Excellence at the Ateneo de Manila University in 1957. And in 1961, he was also one of 10 outstanding young men for the TOYM Awardee for Literature. That is all about Emmanuel Torres. Thank you everyone. Notable author Nestor Vicente Medali Gonzalez, also known NVM Gonzalez. He was a Filipino novelist, short story writer, essayist, and poet. He was born on September 8, 1915 in Romlon, Philippines. He was the son of Vicente Gonzalez, a school supervisor, and Pastora Madali, a teacher. He was married to Narita Manuel, with whom he had four children. He played the violin and even made four guitars by hand. He earned his first peso by playing the violin during a Chinese funeral in Romblon. In 1930, he took the entrance examination to the University of the Philippines but he failed. His most notable works include The Nobles, The Winds of April, The Bamboo Dancers, and The Season of Grace. Short story collection, Children of Ash Covered Blue, The Bread of Salt, and Other Stories and Essay. On April 14, 1987, the University of the Philippines conferred on NVM Gonzalez the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters Honoris Causa for his creative genius in shaping the Philippine short story and novel and making a new clearing within the English idiom and tradition on which he established an authentic vocabulary for his insightful criticism by which he advanced the literary tradition of the Filipino and enrich the vocation for all writers of the present generation, for his visions and auguries by which he gave the Filipino sense and sensibility a profound and unmistakable script read and reread throughout the international community of letters. NVM Gonzalez was proclaimed National Artist of the Philippines in 1997. He died on November 28, 1999 at the age of 84. 
As a national artist, Gonzales was honored with a state funeral at the Livingan ng mga bayan. Hi, I am Rika Mekinita from Cebet 22501P and I'm going to report about the literature under the Republic of the Philippines. One of the notable authors of the Philippines is Alejandro G. Abadilla, or also known as Aga or AGA, was a Filipino poet, essayist, and fiction writer. Critic Pedro Ricarte referred to Abadilla as the father of modern Philippine poetry and was known for his challenging established forms and literatures, excessive romanticism, and emphasis on rhyme and meter. Abadilla helped found the Kapisanang Panitikan in 1935 and edited the magazine called Panitikan. His Ako Ang Daigdig collection of poems is one of his better known works. On his early life, Abadilla was born to an average Filipino family in Salinas Rosario Cavite. He finished elementary school at Sapa Barrio School, then continued for high school education in Cavite City. After graduation, he worked for abroad into a small printing shop in Seattle, Washington. He edited several sections on the Philippine Digest, Philippines American Review, and established Kapisanang Balagtas. In 1934, he returned to the Philippines where he finished AB Philosophy at the University of Santo Tomas. Until 1934, he became Municipal Councilor of Salinas before shifting to insurance selling job. Aside from writing Ako Ang Daigdig, Abadilla wrote several poems and compilation of his works, such as Mga Kwentong Ginto, he co-edited with Clodualdo del Mundo, Mga Piling Katha, Ang Maikling Kathang Tagalog, he co-edited with F.B. Sebastian and A.D.J. Mariano, May Ikling Katha, together with Commission on Filipino Language, Head Ponciano B.P. Pineda, Mga Piling Sanaysay, Parnasong Tagalog, Katipunan ng Mga Piling Tula mula kina Joseng Sisiu at Balagtas hanggang sa kasalukuyang panahon ng pamumulaklak at pagkaunlad. Ako ang daigdig at ipa pang mga tula, Tanaga Badilia. Una at ikalawang aklat. In Filipino poetry, Atanaga is a short poem of one stanza with 7777 syllabic verse with an AAAA rhyme scheme. Usually, Atanaga is embedded with symbols. Atanaga Badilia is a coined term consisting of Tanaga and Abadilia. Pagkamulat ni Magdalena, a novel which he co-edited with Elpidio P. Capulo. Again, Alejandro G. Abadilla. I am Luella and A. Gonzaga, and I will be discussing about Nicomedes Marquez Joaquin, also known as Nick Joaquin. Nick Joaquin is a Filipino writer and journalist best known for his short stories and novels in the English language. He also wrote using the pen name Tijano de Manila. Her mother used to read him poems and stories. The boy, Joaquin, read widely in his father's library and at the National Library of the Philippines. That's when he discovered his interest in writing. Joaquin was conferred the rank and title of National Artist of the Philippines for Literature. Despite being a native Spanish speaker, he wrote his works in English and has been considered as one of the most important Filipino writers along with Jose Rizal and Clara M. Recto. One of Nick Joaquin's famous work was the novel The Woman Who Had Two Navels in 1961. And I think we are all familiar with this novel because if I remember it right, we have tackled this novel during our junior high school literature. Cave and Shadows the action on this novel occurs in the period of martial law under Ferdinand Marcos. Joaquin's other works include the short story collections, including Tropical Gothic in 1972, May Day Eve in 1947, and Summer Solstice in 1972 that depicted the status that women had in the past. 
He also wrote A Question of Heroes in 1977 and Prose and Poems in 1952. The English language used by Nick Joaquin became a medium to express his literary artistry and Filipino patriotism. Nick Joaquin was able to publish a large body of literary works during his time, and through this, he has had a great contribution to Philippine literature. Hi, I am RJ Ray Volante from Cebet 22501P, reporting literature from the Republic. Maganda pa ang taigdig by Lazaro Francisco, 1955. Getting to know the author, Lazaro Francisco is a Filipino novelist, essayist, and playwright known for ilaw sa hilaga, bayang nagpatiwakal at maganda pa ang daigdig. He was born on February 22, 1898 at Orani, Bataan, and died on June 17, 1980 at the age of 82. He was also awarded National Artist of the Philippines for Literature on 2009. Here are some of his novels. Binhi at Bunga, 1925. Sing Sing na Pangkasal, 1939. Ilaw sa Ilaga, 1946. Sugat ng Alaala, 1951. At Daluyong, 1961. Here are some of his short stories. Ang Veterano, 1931. Ang Idolo, Ang Pagtitika, Utos Hari, Huwit ng Baso, Kapulungan ng Mga Pinagpala, all published in 1932. Here are some of his plays, Utos Hari, stage adaptation of his short story in 1932. Ang Ikaapat na Mago, 1942. Here's a brief background of Maganda Pa Ang Daigdig. It is all about Lina Rivera who is a child of a farmer experienced suffering from feudalism. He returned to Pineapple Farm after the war and looked for his son Ernesto. He will recognize the commander Hantic that will encourage him to join the movement that will destroy the agrarian system but he will refuse. He will meet Father Amando who owns a lot of land and will propose a change. Lina's life is quiet when he fell in love with Miss Sanchez. Until he involved in a trouble and was accused of killing a man, he will be jailed but escape with other prisoners. After going back to his province, the group of Lino will become the savior of maltreated farmers. He will also join the group of Don Tito who is a powerful landlord. The novel will end in the war between the rebel and the troop of government. That is all for my report. Thank you for listening. Getting to know the author, Emmanuel Torres is one of the notable authors. He is a poet critic professor of English and comparative literature at Ateneo de Manila. He was born on April 21, 1932. He held the Henry Lee Irwin Chair in Creative Writing and Feb D.C. slash Josevi Fernandez Chair for Art Research. Torres' work of arts include St. Joseph the Worker Chapel 1968, The Drawings of Ang Kiukuk 1976, Ghibli 1979, and Kayamanan 77 paintings from the Central Bank Collection 1981. One of his famous work entitled Walking Home. In the end, Torres' work is truly a work of art. He has forced us not only to see the point of view of an ordinary person, but also made us experience the feelings of being present. Let's proceed to the next topic, which is merger of tradition. What happened during this time? Tagabukid and Tagabayan were the two cultures that made up the political entities. The educated and wealthy, and the one whose lack of education therefore did not qualify to exercise power. Tagabukid was nationalistic and anti-American, or someone who is from mountain, especially in rural area. While Tagabayan were more inclined in the culture of free world, or someone who is from the city, especially called urban area. Good day! My name is John Gib El Guadalupe. And my report is all about the transition from Euro-Hispanic period to Anglo-American period. But first, what is the difference of these two periods? Hmm, any idea? 
The Euro-Hispanic period was socially conscious and deals with reality. But on the other hand, the Anglo-American period was aesthetic qualities full of sentimentality and skepticism. This Hispanic influence is based on indigenous and European tradition. These were introduced from Spain in the 16th century and can be regarded as largely Hispanic in constitution which have remained in the Philippines for centuries. They introduced the traditions in folk dance, it's like La Contradanza and Boleros. They also have a big contribution in traditions in music, especially in literature in the Philippines. The periods under the Anglo-American period are the colonial and early national period, the romantic period, the realism and naturalism, the modernist period, and the contemporary period. The transition of this period was brought about by Jose Garcia Villa, a Filipino poet, literary critic, short story writer, and painter. He was also awarded the National Artist of the Philippines title for literature in 1973. These two traditions have been implanted with indigenous traditions and through the efforts of Filipino writers, they clearly called Filipino literary. Good evening everyone, my name is Jericho T. D. Guzman and my topic is all about existentialism and search for the identity. So what is existentialism? Of course, it talks about the individuals have to take the responsibility for their own actions and shape their own destinies. It is also the emphasis on human responsibility and judgment in ethical matters. And the individual is the sole judge of his or her own action. So what is the effect of existentialism in our Philippine literature? When President Ramon Magsaysay died of a plane crash in Cebu, this, this provoked an intellectual crisis. Claro M. Recto criticized President Ramon Magsaysay for being submissive to the U.S. With the death of Ramon Magsaysay, the country was under confusion and the people beginning to ask Recto for some answer that would be shed some light regarding the counter-political philosophy. However, Recto was not able to finish what he started because he dies in Rome of a heart attack. With Recto's death, the cultural scene in the Philippines became an extension of the US. Many major publications in the New York were brought to the Manila. Literary works included were poetry, fiction, and drama. The latest literary fads in the West spread like wildfire. Some of the creative writers whose work were read by the Filipino were Jean Paul Sartre and Albert Camus. These are some examples of literary works of two philosophers, Jean Paul Sartre and Albert Camus. Thank you for watching and listening. Have a good day.